Hey everybody, this is Eric Clark's Travel Videos and I'm here at Condor Castle and I'm going to go inside and I'll show you the insides and uh, the outsides as well and uh, let's go in and see what we see. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Okay everybody, this is the entrance to Condor Castle and so it's uh, it's really gorgeous and, uh, and I guess we'll see. I got to get my ticket and stuff but uh, but it should be should be pretty interesting so and I don't know what's over here let me go look over here admission charges castles children let me see if I can find you guys a price so adults are $13 children are $7.50 concession is $12.50 families $35 anyway that's the price and the admission stuff so and backpacks you can't have backpacks you can only have them on the front of you because they don't want you knocking stuff around in the house okay that's it bye bye hang on one second okay um, hey everybody, this is the bagpipe guy and he's going to play Outlander for us. So here we go. Very wonderful. Thank you so much. Very nice. Very nice. Here, we'll do a Nux. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you Enjoy the rest of your you too. Day. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Wonderful, everybody. Okay, everybody. Here's the castle. And it's got a huge line. A queue, I guess, as they say, to get inside. And so this might be kind of tough. And it's certainly cold. Wow. Wow, wow. Boy, that's amazing, isn't it? Wow. I love the little round uh, things there. I don't know what they call them, but wow. Cawdor Castle. Wow. Wow. That line is obnoxious. And I guess the whole castle is single file. So you've got to kind of go as the group goes. So I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work. I'm on a tour bus <laughs> and they gave us an hour. So we'll see. Oh, I think it's an hour and a half. But uh, wow. That's just amazing, huh? I zoom in a little bit here for you. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. All right, everybody, let me see what I can do here to hasten my entrance. Bye, everybody. Well, the line doesn't seem to move very fast, that's for sure.
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope I can get on the inside, huh? Hey, everybody. Bye. Okay, I'm getting closer. And it looks like the line's moving a little. I don't know if they just let in 20 at a time, or I guess I'll find out as I get even closer. I think this gate entrance is really cool. So it can be 20 minutes, 45 minutes. It depends how long, how interested you are in, in the information. Yeah. I'm afraid you are the lucky ones that get to go first next time anyway. So if I can ask you... Okay, so I guess I have to stop here, here so... Huh. Okay, everybody. Well... Oh. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. Now for those at the back. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, you if you can, sorry, if I just ask, just squeeze in a little bit more, then I can get a few more pieces. It's for my voice, really. <laughs> I'm starting to lose. <laughs> My name is Graham. I help look after the building here for the owner, the Dowager Countess of Codder. So this is Lady Codder's home. She still lives here. Um, when we open to the public, Lady Codder moves out and lives in another house a couple of miles away. The reason being that the rooms that you visit when you go through the inside are the rooms that she lives in. So in a lot of castles in Scotland, um, you may know there's a lot of castles in Scotland, there's a lot of castles in Scotland that are still lived in, and um, there very few are the same as this in that the rooms that you visit are the rooms that are lived in. Quite often it would be a private wing hidden away at the other side of the house, whereas the principal rooms that you visit are the rooms that Lady Codder still lives in. So in the summer when we open to the public, it's a little inconvenient as I'm sure you can imagine for her to get out of bed, get out for you to all come and enjoy your visit. So in the summer she lives a couple of miles away in a different home. And then in the winter, once we close to the public, she will move back in again. So we don't change anything between now and then. The only difference is between when Lady Gordon lives here and when we're open. We add extra carpet for everyone to walk on. Um, in a normal year, we have about 100,000 visitors from April to October, so you can imagine they'd wear the carpet out. So we put extra carpet in. We've got rope and posts to stop people from wandering off. But exactly as you see it is how it's lived in. We don't bring collections in and take collections away. This is very much what it is like to visit a, a, a family home like this. The other unique thing about Codder is the same family that built the tower in 1372 are still the same family that live in it. So it's never changed hands, it's always been in the same family. Which, in Scotland, we have a, a propensity to fight each other. <laughs> and so for it to have stayed in the same family for all this time is quite remarkable. So, as I mentioned, I, I understand that it's not the, the greatest experience to have to queue, um, and even in Britain we're not great cures, but the reason that we do this is the, the tower itself, the stone here that we are looking at is six foot thick and the stone in the north and the south of the tower is eight foot thick. So once you get inside, you'll realise yourself the rooms are actually much more modest than it may appear from the outside. So for you, we don't want just to be all squashed up together, travelling through like sardines, that's not enjoyable. But for us, we are here to look after the building, so we don't want to risk any damage to the fabric of the building. Um, it's the, the, the difficult balance of letting people come and enjoy it, but equally looking after it. And as Lady Goddard says, on a piece of paper, the castle may be hers, but she's looking after it for everyone. And in actual fact, if you have the audio guy right today, you'll also hear her say that in reality, the castle owns her rather than her owning the castle. So it's for your enjoyment, so I, I appreciate your patience. So, as I mentioned, the tower is the oldest part of the castle. Originally, this tower was built in 1372, so quite a while ago now. There was a castle prior to this one, and that was about a mile and a half to the northeast in the floodplain of the River Nairn, and that was a wooden motted building, so a man-made mound of earth with a wooden structure on the top. And the third thane of Codder, so a thane, which is an ancient title of the family home here, is an ancient Norse title. The Saxon equivalent is a sheriff. They would look after an area on behalf of the crown. Um, and the third thing 
So we start counting at the first vein. There were probably many before him, but there's a written document of him in 1295, so we count him as the first one, and we count forward from there. So it was the third vein that decided to build this castle here. So for quite a while, both castles coexisted. And actually, if you Google it and ask when was Codder Castle built, it will say 1455, which is much later than the tower itself. But the reason is, if you look at the top of the tower, you'll see the turrets and these water spouts, which are the drains. The stone above that, when you look at it from the lawn, not here, you'll hurt your neck, but when you look at it from out front, you'll see the stone's a different colour. And effectively, there was a written charter in 1455, which was a retrospective planning application to add these turrets at the top. So that, if you Google it, that was the first written record of this castle. But like I said, both castles coexisted. So written documents prior to that, it's hard to differentiate which castle they were talking about. But obviously we knew the tower existed long before they added the turrets at the top. So, if you haven't heard already, I'll give you the legend as to why they chose to build the castle here, as opposed to where it was down in the floodplain. So the third thing, wrote to the king, he said, I want to build a new fortified home to look after the area and perform his duties as the, the thane or sheriff. So the king said, yes, you may. He had to then decide, where should I build it? So the legend goes that he had a dream, and a vision in the dream said, load a chest of gold, similar to one that's in this very window, that you'll see once you go inside, onto the back of a donkey, send the donkey out into your land, wherever the donkey lies down to sleep, is where you should build your castle. <laughs> so he woke up and thought, that's a great idea. He got his chest of gold with all the money he'd saved up. He put it in the back of a donkey. He followed the donkey around all day, in the evening, the donkey lay down at the base of a holly tree. Therefore, he decided that's it. He built the castle around the tree. So it sounds far-fetched, but I assure you, once you go into the ground floor of the tower here itself, inside there, there are the remains, petrified remains, of an ancient holly tree. So the late Lord Codder, who, who grew up and lived here at the castle, he preferred fact to fiction. So he took a core sample of the tree and he sent it to a dendrochronologist at Kew Gardens in London and he, for carbon dating as well. So the carbon dating came back saying that the, sorry, the radio is very loud there. Uh, the carbon dating came back saying that this is a holly tree. Well, the dendrochronologist said it was a holly tree. The family thought for generations it was a hawthorn tree, but it's still very important. It's one of the Celtic mystic trees of the mystic blade in Scotland. So still a very important tree, but actually a holly, not a, a hawthorn. And that give or take 15 years for carbon dating, the tree died in 1372. So historians always thought, based on the style of the tower, the, the stone used, the tower was built between 1340 and 1390. Like I said, the first written record much later, but we know that was a, a, an application for the turrets. So 1372, right in the middle of everyone's best guess of when the tower was built. So that meant the vaulted room at the bottom of the tower, and the towers like this were always built with a vaulted room at the bottom, and that meant they couldn't burn it out from below. That meant that vaulted room was complete and there was no more natural light for the tree to survive. So the tree started to petrify. And when you go in the base of the tower now, I assure you it's not a model. Please don't touch it. But you see the tree, the remains of the tree itself, almost like stone to touch. It's quite remarkable. So that's the legend as to why they chose to build the castle here. So I'll just go and check now with my colleagues and I'll see if we've got space and I'll come back up in a bit. You'll have plenty of time, don't worry. So my colleague will just speak to you for a couple of minutes and then be able to let us go inside the house itself, okay? You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank Hope you, you enjoy you. your visit. Please feel free to take photographs and if you do, share them with the world. But we just ask that you don't use flash photography inside the house, please. And if you have any questions, like I said, Bill will be down in this corner. He was here when they built the castle, so he'll be able to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we go.
Up we go. And please mind your head. That's my eye height right there. <laughs> This way, please. Wow, that's really pretty. Look at that. Wow. So she lives here. So this is her house. So minus this carpet, minus all of these things, this is her home. Sorry I'm going fast, but I don't have uh, <laughs> a lot of time because I certainly don't want to miss my tour bus. Wow, really cool. The pink bedroom. people in front of me so this might get a little tricky I uh, slide by oh, pardon me pardon me these little doors are tiny huh <laughs> Five foot six doors, okay. This one's shorter than five six. This hits my head. <laughs> That's funny. Wow. Wow. And there's a lot of things in these, each one of these rooms that has things to read, but I, my time is uh, quite limited, everybody. So again, I apologize for the speed of this. That's a beautiful cabinet right there. Huh. Wow. Huh. Wow, look at the stairs too. Wow. Okay. Down we go. Help. Okay. I'm going to catch up to my parents. Okay. Great 
great ceiling. The old kitchen. How cool is this? It's really a cute bike over there too. There's one for you, Seth. Look at the steering. See how that all works? That's a trip right there. Wow. Amazing. Okay. All right, Eric, don't dawdle. Let's move it. <laughs> Old table, or is this the out? Oh, maybe this is the store. So this is it. I think this is it. Everybody, thanks for coming with me. I'm sorry to run through this whole thing. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Okay, bye, everybody.